Hello, this is Exploring History and I'm Stu and tonight we're going to be talking about theories and facts on the Jack the Ripper murders. Whitechapel, 1888, East London. The face of Jack the Ripper. Where five gruesome murders took place. Mary Ann Nichols, 31st of August. Annie Chapman, 8th of September. Liz Stride, 30th of September. Catherine Eddowes, 30th of September. Mary Jane Kelly, 9th of November. Five murders, endless amounts of suspects. The rain of Jack the Ripper in 1888 left gruesome and terrifying scars on London's East End. Mary Ann Nichols was born 26th of August 1845 and was brutally murdered August 31st, 1888. She was just 43 years old. She was buried 6th of September, 1888. Her body was found by two men that alerted the police. When the police had arrived, they found that Mary Ann Nichols' throat had been cut. This was the site of Bucks Row. The autopsy report reported her head had almost been removed. She had been ripped open from the breastbone and her intestines exposed. Annie Chapman was born 1840 and left her husband for a life of drinking and prostitution in the dark majesty of the East End of London. Annie Chapman was found murdered at the back of a yard in Hanbridge Street, 8th of September 1888. Annie Chapman's injuries were more or less the same as Polly Nichols her throat was cut from left to right, her abdomen gashed open and her intestines laid open for everyone to see. Annie Chapman was laid to rest on the 14th of September 1888. There was two police forces investigating the murders. On one side, the city police, and on the other, the Metropolitan. Chief Inspector Abernoy was leading the investigation with the Metropolitan Police. Newspapers started printing articles and pictures suggesting that the police weren't doing their jobs properly and blinded by investigation. This, of course, was not true, because at the time of investigation, they were doing everything to gather evidence. Detective Inspector Edmund Reed, head of the CID at Whitechapel Division, was also assigned to hunt 
the Ripper alongside Detective Inspector Rabeline. Painstaking hours and determination could not stop these two detectives, but rivalry was on the cards to hunt and find the Ripper before one another. John Pizer, also known as Lever Apron to the neighbours and prostitutes alike, was arrested, but was released after providing a suitable alibi to this allegation. The Lever Apron found by Annie Chapman's body also turned out to be a red herring. It belonged to a shopkeeper that lived on the same street. Arrests were being made left and right in aid to catch the Ripper. On the 27th of September, the Central News Agency received a letter addressed from, from hell. This letter read, Dear Boss, I keep on hearing the police have caught me, but they won't fix me just yet. I have laughed when they look so clever and talk about being on the right track. That joke about Leather Apron gave me real fits. I am down on whores and I shan't quit ripping them until I do get buckled. <laughs> Grand work the last job was. I gave the lady no time to squeal. <laughs> How can they catch me now? I love my work and want to start again. You will soon hear of me with my funny little games. I saved some of the proper red stuff in a ginger beer bottle over the last job to write with. But it went thick like glue and I can't use it. Red ink is fit enough, I hope. <laughs> the next job I, sh I do, I shall clip the lady's ears off. And send them to the police officers just for jolly, wouldn't you? Keep this letter back till I do a bit more work, then give it out straight. My knife's so nice and sharp, I want to get to work right away if I get the chance. Good luck. Yours truly, Jack the Ripper. Don't mind giving the trade name. P.S. Wasn't good enough to post this before I got all the red ink off my hands, curse it. No luck yet. They say I'm a doctor now. Elizabeth Stride was born in Sweden on the 27th of November, 1843. Elizabeth Stride came to England after a disaster had taken her children and her husband in 1878. The disaster killed between five, six hundred people. Elizabeth Stride was found murdered at Berner Street with just her throat cut. This was leading up to the double event. She was then laid to rest on the 6th of October, 1888. George Lusk, head of the Whitechapel Vigilance Committee, received the letter, supposedly by Jack the Ripper himself alongside half a kidney, supposedly from Catherine Eddowes. Here's the story. From hell, Mr. Lusk. Sir, I send you half the kidney I took from one woman. I reserved it for you. The other piece, I fried and ate it. It was very nice. I may send you the bloody knife that took it out if you only wait a while longer. Sign. Catch me when you can, Mr. Lusk. Mile Square, a dark street with dark intentions. This street is the only street in existence that still survives the reign and the terror of a Jack the Ripper victim. 
Because of the terror surrounding the East End of London, extra police officers were put on the streets. White Square was being patrolled every 15 minutes in interval. A dark shadow lurking in the corner of Mark Square with sinister intentions struck once again. Catherine Eddowes was born 14th of April 1842. Saturday 29th of September, Catherine Eddowes was found laying drunk in Allgate Street. She was found by PC Lewis Robinson and taken into custody at Bishop's Gate Police Station the night before her murder. When she was asked for her name, she replied with nothing. She was left in a police cell until the morning of the 30th of September at 1am when she was released. Once after, sobering up. Not an hour after Elizabeth Stride had a throat cut, Catherine Eddowes was found murdered in the dark corners of Mitre Square. In addition to abdominal wounds, the murderer had cut across the bridge of her nose, the eyelids of both eyes, and had cut two V-shaped wounds into her cheeks. The tip of her nose and a part of the ear had been cut off and a kidney had been taken. Catherine Eddowes was unidentifiable. A mustard tin containing two pawn tickets in the names of Emily Birrell and Anne Kelly was discovered in Catherine Eddowes' body. Thomas Conway, an ex-military soldier, and the common law husband of Catherine Eddowes identified her body after reading an article in the paper and came forward. Catherine Eddowes was laid to rest on the 8th of October 1888. On a wall not too far from Catherine Eddowes' body, written in chalk, engraved the words The Jews are the men that will not be blamed for nothing. Police Commissioner Charles Warren ordered that the writing to be washed off the wall, as he felt there would be public outcry if they fought a Jew had committed these heinous crimes. Four murders, the reign of terror, the summer of death. Suspects unfolding on a day-to-day -day basis Newspapers recording the murders and crime scenes mounting up. Some ludicrous theories came about even to photograph Annie Chapman's retinas to see if the image of the killer had engraved in her eyes. politician even suggested it might be an unruly woman. The Lord Mayor of London offered a reward of £500 
of any information leading to the capture of Jack the Ripper. The Mayor's Office receives over 1,400 letters and witness statements in aid to collect the £500 reward money. Mary Kelly, an attractive young prostitute, aged 25 years old, was born in 1863 in County Limerick, Ireland. She had her own lodgings at Miller's Court in Spitalfields. In the early hours of the morning, November 9th, a man carrying a parcel and was later described as foreign looking with a carotene moustache enters Mary Jane Kelly's rooms. A couple of hours later neighbours report the cries of murder but no one investigates. At 10 o'clock in the morning 9th of November 1888 a rent collector turned into Dawson Street then turned into Miller's Court knocked on the door of the ground floor room there was no answer he went to the side where he saw a broken window pulled the curtain back and there to his horror he discovered the body of Mary Kelly. What the police discovered after they walked through the door was truly and utterly horrifying. Mary Kelly's face had been cut off. She was ripped from the breastbone to the stomach. Her heart was removed. And both breasts had been removed. Flesh that was cut off from the inner thigh had been placed on the table next to her. Mary Kelly was sadly murdered on the 9th of November, 1888. She was laid to rest on the 19th of November, 1888, at Leighton Stone Cemetery. Jack the Ripper, a man in history, whom eluded police frustrated governments could you find the ripper till next time sleep tight